David Laney, American hero. <laughs> I wish. Welcome back to Chamonix, bro. Uh, thanks, man. How you doing? <laughs> it's great to see you. Good to thank, see you. Thanks so much for coming over. Just thank you, guys. Uh, it's only, what, a day and a half before your big mission at CCC this weekend? Yeah, getting there. <laughs> Just getting there. <laughs> well, you've been here like a month, though? Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, almost a month. Yeah. Yeah. It's been super nice. And is this trip number five to UTMB for you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. So four UTMBs. Four UTMBs and hopefully one CCC. Yeah. This year you're stepping down in distance. Yeah. Just tell, tell me about the consideration for that first. I mean, we should say, you know, you've had a good track record here at UTMB. Mm -hmm. One of the best performing Americans in history, a third place, fourth place, 14th place. Last yeah. year was tough. We can talk yeah. about all those, but yeah. why CCC this year? Yeah, good question. Um, partly because of the way the new UTMB structure is. I really wanted to run the 100K at Canyons. And I was like, I guess I'll do CCC because that's how you get in. Yeah. Uh, and then there was some talk of you being able to switch later. And I just kind of was like, you know, maybe just doing something different. Uh, see what happens. Cool. So maybe going back to Canyons. You also did Black Canyon earlier in the year. Yeah, you, I was trying to get a golden ticket yeah. all spring. So... And, uh, failed miserably, <laughs> <laughs> but, dude, it's gotten a lot harder, hasn't it? It's gotten so much harder. That's one of the awesome. things. Yeah. That's one of the things I wanted to talk to you about of just like, you know, you've been in the game a long time. How old are you now? Yeah. 34, 34, but it's, I mean, it's still young, dude. Wait till your 37 year old dad. <sighs> yeah. But the reason I bring it up is that like you've through your career, had the perfect vantage point to sort of watch this crazy advancement and evolution of the professional ranks of the sport. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if there's anything you want to say about that specifically as it pertains to UTMB, having raced and finished here four times and seeing the level continuing to increase and the spectacle continuing to increase here. Yeah. I mean, it, it has changed. It's like night and day. And honestly, like, literally thanks to you guys, like thanks to free trail. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm not even kidding. You guys increased the value of athletes and UTMB increased the value of athletes and like the media coverage of the, like UTMB would be nothing if media didn't come here. Yeah. Like it would be a, it would be a sweet trail race, but it wouldn't be, you know, this whole thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you guys increasing the value of athletes makes the whole system run. Yeah. Like let people see what's going on out here. And that's what you guys are doing. So. Well, thank you so much. Thank man. you. We're, we're trying thank to you. do our part, you know, yeah. trail running will save the world and yeah. you know, we just wake up every day, you know, just having to save the world. So yeah. it's an awesome, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a big responsibility, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, in all seriousness though, I mean, like this has been a, a big part of your career, a mm -hmm. big part of, you know, your personal story as an athlete. What, what about UTMB is like continues to draw you back? Is it just because it is the biggest stage? Yeah. I mean, I wish I was like, I cared that much about the competitive side. I just yeah. don't, I just like being over here. Has that changed like, over time? No, I've never, like I am competitive for, from the starting line to the finish line, but any time, any other time, like, no, like yeah. something changes in my mind and I just really want to run hard. And, but every other time I'm just like, man, I just want to go out and run the mountains. Yeah. It's interesting you say that though, because this is relevant to me now too. And maybe fun thing for us to riff on is two guys who have been in the game for a long time. I definitely have noticed that my desire to like compete has drastically decreased mm -hmm. and maybe it's just the you know, the fact that I am getting older and sort of feel a finish line mm -hmm. getting closer. Yeah. I mean, you still got a lot of tread left on the tires, we'll but <laughs> is, does any of that feel relevant to you also? I think, um, I still want to race a lot. I think what I want to race has changed a lot. Um, like normally I would have never done CCC. I would be like, it's not UTMB. I'm not going to do it like all or nothing. <laughs> and I'm like, actually, this is a cool race. I kind of like the idea of running really hard for 10 hours, mm -hmm. hopefully. Um, so it's kind of been fun to have a little bit of freedom to do different stuff. 
and I have some different stuff I want to do next year. And like, you know, it used to, I mean, it was still this year, like just chasing golden ticket all spring, black Canyon canyons. Um, but I think I've given, you know, in the last couple of years, given myself a little bit more freedom to do stuff. That's, that sounds cool to me. And I hope to do that more in the future. Cool. So let's talk about your training a little bit. You've been blasting the volume, man. It seems like in the month that you've been here, just trying to keep up with Tim and Ida, honestly. (laughs) Uh, I mean, yeah, it's been pretty fun. Good, good energy in the house and been getting out together a lot. So it's been fun. So tell us about that dynamic. Obviously Tim Tollefson, Ida Nilsson are legends of the game and the three of you being able to spend time together and sort of build fitness and Mm -hmm. motivation together. If you can give us a, a fly on the wall perspective of what it's been like for yeah your threesome for the last yeah uh and aroa um co who was like eighth last year yeah so she's in the house too uh yeah i mean it's like you've seen the zoolander gasoline fight yeah it's kind of like it's been like that pretty much <laughs> um no honestly we get up at like everyone wakes up around six and goes to bed at like six yeah. and it's just like been super chill. Yeah. Uh, had some super good sessions. You know, the crew runs together a little bit and you know, everyone's like uniquely strong in a different way. Yeah. So Tim climbs super quick. He did descend super quick. Uh, so it's just fun to have kind of complementary skill sets. Yeah. Um, is there anything you've taken from them or anything that you guys have sort of been talking about that maybe sticking in your head ahead of CCC? Yeah, I think, um, I think the biggest, the biggest thing I've taken is just like an energy of confidence and professionalism. Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, Tim and Ida are just like such professionals in what they do. And so there's just like a calm, like whether it goes well or whether it, doesn't there's just a good energy in the house yeah uh good professionalism good you know the kind of momentum and vibe you want before something like this sweet yeah Ida was here yesterday tim's coming in tomorrow so i'm gonna sort of get the perspective from all three of you your training specifically like how does it compare to what you were doing before utmb during those years like are you doing more specific higher intensity type stuff to try and match the level that you know you'll need to be at for ccc as opposed to doing longer slower volume a little bit of both yeah um i mean in 2015 what was my training like like just absurd like i was just doing i was still just a road runner yeah and just doing road workouts and so if you looked at my training from then and look at my training now like you know now is way better like i can climb much stronger i can descend stronger you know, much more fatigue resistant, but overall the competitive landscape of the sport has just exploded. Yeah. So even though I feel like a better runner, you have to perform yeah. like at that A level or else you, there's a hundred men and women behind you ready to hit you up. It's such a good point. I mean, this is not super relevant to your story, but it's, you know, front of mind because you know, we've been talking to a bunch of athletes over the last couple of days and Amanda Basham was in here too. And of course she's now a mother of two. And she was saying the same thing of like, you know, coming back after giving Mm -hmm. birth, like not only needing to get back to where she was, but you know, the the sport continues to advance. And so she feels like, you know, she has to get to where she was and then continue to progress. And, you know, you as somebody who's performed super well on the international stage for a long time, it's like, you can't ever rest on your laurels because so many, so many guys coming up behind you. Yeah. You and I did a podcast a f- couple of years ago where we talked about your third place finish here and how it was sort mm. of like inspired by Rory Bozio's race execution totally. the year that yeah. she broke the course record. And so I'd love to ask you to kind of repeat that because I think yeah. Rory is somebody who has not sought to stay in the trail running spotlight. Totally. And that race in 2013, like most people probably don't remember except yeah. for people like you and I. Yeah. So maybe talk about that inspiration for you and, and how it ended up sort of evolving in the same way when you finished third here back yeah. in 2015. So uh, it was my first time in the Alps and Ryan Gelfie and I are in a sharing an Airbnb. Like 
back when you would get an Airbnb that someone else lived in and you would have like a room. <laughs> so we're sharing this Airbnb with this dude, like 10 K down the Valley, like this random spot. And we have this tiny bedroom and I'm like sleeping on the floor in a sleeping bag. And, and Yelfie's like, you know, just like a statistician statistician. Yeah. Yeah. Like just a ma- like just a math dude. And he's just pouring over splits and I'm just like, yeah, whatever. And he's like, you know, it's like 10 o'clock at night. And he's like, Rory, o- Rory Bozio is the best UTMB runner ever. And I'm just like, Oh, like what? And then, so he, he broke it down for me, like how perfect her race was. Really? And then I looked at it and then finally there's like this light bulb moment. Like, like you realize what she did. Like she got fourth place overall. Yeah. And the way she ran the second half and the evenness of it. And you're like, that's how everybody should run UT. Like, yeah. And then you watch, you know, there's a North Face video and you start putting the pieces together and you're like, that's the best, like Courtney level execution. Yeah. I mean, Courtney had to have a magic day to break that record. Yeah. Yeah. So like, then it kind of clicked and you kind of start like thinking through it and then you're like, okay, like, can I, you know, can I execute like that? Can I do that? Am I willing to go out and be in a hundredth place at some point? Uh, and so you kind of have to like mentally kind of like put your pride aside and be like, I'm going to try and do this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that's still one of the best ultras ever. Yeah. Definitely one of the best UTMBs ever. There's been good ones since then, but yeah, it's definitely some, a a race I still think about. It'll go down in history. Yeah. So that was eight years ago now. 2015. Yeah. So that means you were 26 when you did that. So So damn. So maybe on that subject, you know, and on the subject of the sport advancing, like now at UTMB and CCC and OCC, it's like you, if you want to win, you can't race like that. Totally. Like if your goal is to finish on the podium, you might have a chance, but mm. if you want to win, you have to take big risks. You have to yeah. go off the front yeah. and have a magic day. Yeah. Um, is that something that like, you know, you think about in terms of like your own racing strategy and like, we don't, you don't need to be too explicit about your goals for Friday, but it's sort of like, yeah, you can't. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm going to do everything in my power not to be in 50th place at Grand Cold. Yeah. Yeah. You pretty much have to be, I think you could be in 15th, but I don't think you want to be much. I mean, it's just like the first half of CCC is so runnable. And the second half is where you get those three big technical climbs. Yeah. So, you know, there might be a little bit of slowing, but people are going to be super fresh at some Trombe Lock. Yeah. So. And it, like, again, Petter Engdahl last year too. Unbelievable. Absolutely laced it. He's going to actually yeah. be in here this afternoon yeah. too. So. Yeah. I'll, I'm excited to follow him at UTMB. Yeah. So anything else you want to say about like, you know, this year's CCC, your goals, what you're looking forward to? Just finish. Yeah. Just get to the finish line. <laughs> I think that's, you know, like, I mean, in all honesty, like you kind of have to have the mentality, like from both the competitive side, like I'm going to make it hurt as much as I possibly can. Yeah. And if it hurts as much as it possibly can, and that means walking from Triant yeah. for 10 hours, like you just got to be ready for that, yeah. that battle. Yeah. Whether so- it's walking or sprinting. So you have had those magic days here. You had a tough one at UTMB last year. What do you attribute that to? Last year was just got COVID. Oh, really? In end of May. (laughs) So June was like crummy training. Yeah. July was a big work trip. I had to go to Boston. Yeah. So it's like you're in Boston. What are you going to do? And then got here and had a couple weeks, but yeah, it was just bad, super bad training. Yeah. CCC, there's a great lineage of Americans performing well, especially American men, which is not the case at UTMB. Yeah. Zach won, Hayden won, Claire won on the women's side. Yeah. Why do you think there's a difference there? Like, why have the American men been able to put it together on the CCC course and not UTMB? Because I think it's it's a hard 50K, pretty much. Yeah. Like, Uh. it's 
pretty much 50, like it's a super runnable first half. And we're pretty good at running. I mean, that first climb is like the nastiest climb of, of any of the courses. Yeah, but it's like, it's just so straight off the bat, yeah. I think. You just survive and you it that, and then you open it up. Yeah, and yeah. then you have that runnable all the way to Grand Colferi, all the way down. La Foulie's just so fast. Yeah. Like, you're on a road. So I think that's part of it. I think we're okay at running fast for a short amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've been asking everybody like the same final closing question. So I'm going to propose it to you. Yeah. And that is just who is going to be crewing for you on Friday? That's a good question. Why, why did you choose that person and what have they meant to you over time? Yeah. Great question. I don't know who's crewing for me. Um, I think it's going to be Mimi's husband, Tony. Uh, we met a couple days ago <laughs> at the house uh, I trust Mimi and he's Swedish. And so I trust he's him. He's probably a good guy. The Swedes are good people. Yeah. The Bowmans the are Swedes. Swedes. Are, the Bowmans are Swedes. I knew so. you were Swedes yeah. because I knew how good of a person you were. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, the Swedes are just a unique, like uniquely kind and professional yeah. group of people. I mean, and they have me. a good energy. Like you just, when I come into an aid station, I want whoever's there to not be stressed. And this guy's not going to be stressed. Yeah. So it's, it'll be dope. <laughs> yeah. It's so hilarious. Cause like most people's answers are like, you know, it's my partner. Yeah. And, you know, she's the one who knows me the best and knows when I'm, what to say in the hard moments. And you're just yeah. like, oh, maybe Mimi's husband. He's yeah. a Swede. I trust him. <laughs> Swedes are good people. Yeah. <laughs> Well, good for you, man. Yeah. I'm sure uh, whoever steps up to the plate will be, uh, you know, embracing a, a great athlete who will keep a good attitude for the course of 100 kilometers yeah. around Mont Blanc. Yeah. David Laney, good luck to you on Friday. Thanks we'll be so cheering much. for you, buddy. Thanks. Cheers.